Elizabeth, on the show today we have Lee Brennan from 911. Hey Lee, how are you doing? I'm great, Darren. Thanks. Good to be on the show. Thank you very much for coming on as well. No worries. No I, worries. I have to say, what a year you guys have had. If I had said 12 months ago I've got someone from 911 on the show, you probably wouldn't have believed me, would you? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I wouldn't have believed a word of it. Um, it's been, it has been one of the best years of my life, really. And I think for all three of us in the band and stuff, it's just been. It's been a roller coaster of like fun, mm. emotion, amazing things. Doing the tour at the big arenas again has been incredible. But I think the whole process from start to finish, and um, it's been announced as well that all the big arena bands are doing the um, Christmas charity single for Tech Santa. So fingers crossed, we'll get a number one for charity at the end of the year, which will be amazing. Oh, fantastic! There's some, some big things happening for you guys on yeah. the big reunion. It looked so emotional because I'm guessing, you know. Obviously, it was years ago when you guys split up, but I'm guessing that there were still some raw emotions there, weren't there? There was. I think we didn't talk about a lot of stuff mm. back in the day. Communication was our our problem as a band, I think. And, um, you know, being guys, guys don't tend to speak about certain things. They sort of hold it all in. And um, so, yeah, we we just, you know, when we got off of the show, we, uh, we sat down and we said, you know, if we're going to do this, let's just be really open and honest in front of the cameras and, you know, whatever you need to say about or inside of the business or whatever, just just say it. I think people will, will appreciate that truth coming from us. Was it quite hard actually laying all those emotions on the line and, and on national telly as well? It was, but I think, um, you know, a few of the interviews that we did as a group, we, um, you know, we had a couple of drinks before just to sort of settle our nerves a bit. Yeah, and, yeah. and within about five, ten minutes, we'd forgotten the cameras were there, but... Um, you know, we're just chatting amongst ourselves and so, sometimes we'd sort of say stuff and we just hear you chuckling behind the cameras because they were laughing at us. <laughs> so it, was, it was just really good fun, but I said, it was just like therapy, really, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Telling the guys how I felt about them and the, the, the vice versa as well, how they felt about me. I suppose closure on a, a big period of your life as well, isn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's um, it needed to be done as well, I think, to move forward together not as and not as just a band but as people i think it's um it's good to get everything out on the table how you felt and you know we re- definitely respect each other a lot more for that for that did it shock you how how excited the fans were about your return how much love was still out there for 911 yeah big time i mean they're obviously probably 25 30 plus are our fans now and yeah i think the good thing about the tv show it it showed um everybody's personalities off i think as as people from a TV show rather than just people in a band sort of thing. So I think people who maybe weren't fans of all the different bands on the show, I think they, they sort of just, um, there was a connection with, with everybody. I think that's why the arena, you know, saw about 100,000 people and the support of all the bands on the on the shows was, was incredible. So, yeah, it's, we're so lucky, all of us. It's, it's been amazing. It's great that you've got like a, a sort of second slice of the pot pie, if you like, because, you know, th- these people have grown up with you, haven't they? So you have loyal fans. They're great fans. Yeah, I mean, loyal fans have, have always been there, even even before the, the Big Reunion show, you know, on Twitter and Facebook. We've always had sort of really nice messages from fans and stuff and telling us about they've been married and they've got kids and all that stuff. So it's really weird meeting, I guess it's weird meeting Faces that we recognised from, from back in the day so much, and now they're all growing up, and they they brought the kids along and stuff, and we met the kids, and they were doing the body shaking and stuff for us. It's quite <laughs> quite strange. So to get a second sort of pop of doing big shows and being on TV again, performing and you know doing presenting things that we've done as well, it's just it's, it's incredible, and we appreciate it a lot more. I think this time we can appreciate everything we're doing. Now, I know you've still got the, the big reunion Christmas tour to come up, but after that, in 2014, you're doing your own headline tour, aren't you? That's right, yeah. We've got the big Christmas party reunion, um, which is going to be amazing again to, to finish the year, and the, hopefully the Christmas single will be topping the charts. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, so March 2014, so our first sort of headline UK tour, like, for, what, 14 years, and it's, you know, we're just going to be doing all the greatest hits and stuff and playing more hometown of... Carlisle for the first time in like 17 years at the Sand Centre, which is going to be what a night on the family and friends and stuff. Oh, and the wow. fans, uh... Do you actually get more nervous when there's family and friends in the audience? Yeah, definitely do, do, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I probably... Um... <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably concentrate a lot more on my dance moves and stuff and my singing <laughs> when all my family and friends are there scrutinising me. But that'd be a nice big night out afterwards. Uh, it's going to be great. I think it's... Um, I think it might be on Paddy's night, actually. Actually, 16th oh, or 17th of 
exactly what yeah, we yeah. get the Guinness on stage, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and also, you guys have been in the studio as well, haven't you? Yeah, again, we're lucky enough off the back of Big Reunion to get um, an opportunity to work with um, the guy that wrote most of our our hits first time round, um, a guy called John McLaughlin. We right. went to Glasgow and in the studio for like two times a week for about six, seven weeks and we got came up with seven new songs. It was five of us writing um, day and night and stuff and yeah, really proud of it and um, we just wanted to write catchy pop, which is what you know, all our songs back in the day were just catchy pop songs, mm. but obviously now it's got the um, contemporary production on it. So hopefully, I think, well, yeah, the fans have, you know, they've, they've told us they think they'll be great, and I'm really proud of it. Is it nerve-wracking putting, putting new music out there? Um, not as nerve-wracking as, as I thought it would be, mm. no, because I guess, um, you know, this time we're in control of everything. We've, we've got an um, independent label with John McGlough from the songwriter, so we so we're doing it all on a, on a shoestring, and I think a lot of people um, do that um, now. So we just we we didn't get any CDs printed up or anything. Um, we just basically did it via um, downloads and stuff like that. So I think we're going to bring the CDs in maybe um, for the tour next March. We'll bring the physical copies and stuff, which a lot of fans have been asking us about. I guess our fans from back in the day used to having a CD copy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, obviously, yeah, because of downloads now. But, yeah, it's just really good that we can do it. We sort of, um, we've got like a strategy over the next year and stuff to sort of just filter everything out bit by bit. So it's it's the right way for us to do it now anyway. So the good thing is, the good news is you're staying together, certainly for the, the, the immediate future. Yeah, definitely. We're off to, um, you know, we're off to Japan in January briefly. We're, we're going to be um, hopefully touring around Asia and stuff next year. Well, you were massive there anyway, Europe. weren't you, in, in Asia? Yeah, it was incredible over there. We, yeah. You know, we did, obviously, we, we were really, um, you know, quite big in the UK, obviously, but over there, it was, it was incredible, the, the support and the, the size of shows that we used to do and stuff, and the albums we sold. So I can't wait to get back out there either. So at the minute, we, yeah, we're just enjoying everything that's, that's coming our way and mm. stuff and just riding that wave, I guess. Really exciting times. Now, Lee, right, if you don't mind, what we do on this show is, is I like to get to know people a little bit better. You know, just get okay. under the skin, get to know the nitty gritty. So I thought we'd ask you some quick fire questions that sort of <laughs> get to the point. Yeah. So are you ready? Go for it. OK. What did you have for dinner last night? I'm not very quick, am I? <laughs> you can't uh, remember, do you? <laughs> I had. Oh, my goodness. I, I had tuna. Omelette, that's what I had. Tuna omelette with protein shake mixed in. Very, yeah, healthy. Oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> you're getting fit for the tour, you see, yeah. Yeah. Uh, your favourite film? Oh, I'm going to go for Wizard of Oz. There you go. Ah. Uh, boxers or briefs? Mm, briefs. The last album you bought? James Blunt, Moon Landing. That's a great record, isn't it? Oh, I love his, I love his single. Yeah, uh, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, uh, the most famous person you've ever met? That would be the Bee Gees. Oh wow, that was amazing. Met them twice, actually, incredible, and yeah, lovely, lovely guys. Oh, fantastic! Legends. When you're cooking your signature dish? Yes. Do I have to finish that line? Uh, yeah. What is yeah? What is your what is your your signature dish when you're cooking? Oh, right, sorry. Um, my signature dish is Jamie Oliver's spaghetti bolognese. Oh, OK. Quite good at that, yeah. What's your favourite tipple? Red wine. Yeah. And finally, the cheesiest song on your iPod. Now, we've, we've all got one. If, if it helps, I can tell you mine. Yeah, tell me yours. Yeah, OK. This was a pure accident, I think. Because I, I don't remember putting it on there, but somehow it's there. I've got Sinita's So Macho. Wow. Yeah, don't laugh. Please don't laugh. No, listen, I used to love all the Pete Walkman stuff. <laughs> um, see this one I've got? Yeah. Oh, wow, I've got I've got some I've got some 80s stuff on there. What is it? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll just stump me on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> uh, we'll go for... Oh, I don't even know. I'll go for one. I'll go for Love Sensation. I was second single. There you go. That's that's a cheesy tempo song. Oh, you guys are <laughs> cheesy. You're fine. I can't think what <laughs> that one was. Definitely, I can't think. I cannot think of anything for the life of me what what it could be. Um, yeah, just in it. I know I've got some eighties tracks in there. I can't remember them. Ah, uh, well, listen, Lee. Um, thank you so much for talking to us today. Uh, when's the album coming out? It's very soon, isn't it? The, the greatest hits. 
Well, you can download it now on um, yeah. like iTunes and um, Google Play and all that kind of thing, and Amazon, I think. And um, yeah, we're going to be uh, obviously have the physical copies on tour next March. So hopefully, see a few people in their car at the Centre. Be great. Fantastic. That's going to be an amazing gig. I uh, can't wait. Yeah, be, look, yeah, look the ultimate. Great. Cheers, Lee. Good luck with it all, and uh, thank you for talking to us. Great. Thanks very much, man. Take care. That's great.